Good evening, everyone. Um, we will get started here soon. If you have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat and we will go over them after the presentation. Um, Al, do you want to get started? Also, I want to remind everyone that this um, meeting is recording, so we will have it on our website afterwards. Hey, Al, we can't hear you. Yeah, I see. I was muted okay. on both of <laughs> these. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I am here again, and uh, the famous faux pas on <laughs> the, these types of meetings is that I neglected to see that I was muted, and you didn't see my camera and see me talking and not hearing me either, so my apologies on that. Let's go back, and uh, we'll start again from the beginning. Uh, again, uh, this webinar is on dental and vision insurance, and uh, this will be a shorter meeting than we did for the health insurance. Uh, as far as the dental, good news on that, much like the health insurance, no change in rates on either the dental or the vision plans for the upcoming year. We're doing some tweaking on the plan designs as far as what's available on the dental insurance, uh, but that will be, I think, for the benefit of most everyone that are on the plans. The dental insurance, oh, by the way, I forgot since you couldn't hear me, I'll introduce myself again. So I'm Al Berg, and I am the consultant uh, with Northwest Partners, and our firm works with Williston Basin School District on your employee benefits. So we assist on the health insurance plan, the dental, the vision, the life insurance, uh, the flex, and the uh, HSA. So any questions you might have, I am going to be in Williston next week uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. So that'll be on the 26th and the 27th. And there'll be more information out about that. So if you have specific coverage questions in your situation and would like to visit, I'll be there and uh, with the other enrollers and be glad to visit with you. Or if you have a specific question and want to contact me, uh, you can just request my contact information from Miranda and feel free to even reach out at uh, to me in advance. So let's dive into the dental insurance plan. Uh, the plan it will remain with the same insurance company with Reliance Standard. And uh, the, the benefit design that you have is really pretty typical for what I see in North Dakota. I, I do dental plans all over the state, work with a lot of school districts, and this is a, a fairly common design for dental insurance. Keep in mind again that this is a voluntary plan. You pay the entire premium. The district is sponsoring it and they make it available to you on a payroll deduction, but it is your cost uh, should you choose to enroll. And I know there are several hundred people that are enrolled in the plan. Uh, for the upcoming year in 2023, there will be no change in premiums uh, for the plan. They, they will remain the same. Now that's for most of you. Uh, I'm going to mention that because there will be an exception. Some of you will see a little bit of an increase, but you're going to see an improvement in coverage too. And I'll explain that as we get to the next slide. Uh, on this plan, you can go to any dentist that you want to. There is a network. Uh, you can go there, but 
and those fees may be lower in network, but there's no penalty if you go out of network. And the challenge, and one of the changes we made on this plan is that the network is really limited in the Williston area. There is one endodontist in Williston that participates in the network, and there is one dentist in Trenton, at least according to the website, uh, that participate with the plan. And obviously you've got more dentists in the area than that. So uh, the plan, is designed and one of the reasons we made a change on it is to make it so that it's going to pay well no matter where you go and it's going to pay top of scale according to uh, what the policy says and uh, the way that will work is that some of you are on the low plan there's not many people that are on that if you are on the low plan that's the one where there's an in-network coverage and not a network coverage the in-network coverage is the same on the low plan as what the regular coverage is on the high plan. The problem is though, or the challenge I should say, that a lot of people have run into is that, like I just talked about, there's just not many dentists in the network. So if you go out of network, which a lot of people did, or they do, then it pays at a lower level. So a regular exam, uh, if you're at the highest level, pays at 100%. Well, if you're on the low plan and you go out of network, it pays at 80%. And it caught some people by surprise. So what we've done with this is that the low plan is going to be discontinued at the end of the year. Those of you who are on it, you would remain on it through the end of the year. And then if you're on the low plan, you'll be transitioned over to the other plan. And that, again, will be up to you. If you decide, no, I don't want to do that, uh, then you can just let Miranda know, uh, or you can see one of the enrollers and you could cancel your coverage. But I think you'll be pleased with this because you're not going to be dealing with the network issues uh, now moving everybody on to one plan. There will be an increase in premium. We'll look at those rates here in a little bit. But I think for a number of people, the net cost will probably be less because I suspect there's a number of people out there who are paying 20% on their routine checkups that on the new plan, they won't need to pay because that will cover at 100%. And yeah, you pay more in premium, but you probably save that uh, with the better coverage. That's uh, what my thought is, and that's why we recommended just going to one plan. And plus, we found that that low plan was confusing to employees as well. So you won't have to worry about the network. So yes, the network will still be there, but it's more a case of being able to get some lower fees. You're not penalized if you go out of network. What does the coverage look like on the dental plan? There are three categories, actually four categories. Uh, uh, the fourth category is orthodontics. That's on the next page. Uh, but for type one services, those are preventive. Exams, cleanings, bite wing x-rays, full mouth x-rays, fluoride treatments for children under age 18, those are covered at 100%. There's no deductible, no copay, anything like that. Pays at 100% uh, on the plan. Type two services are called basic services. That would be sealants, fillings, endodontics. Endodontics, by the way, your favorite pastime, root canals. Uh, periodontics, uh, which would be gum surgery. And then of course, extractions. And those are covered at 80%, which means the plan pays 80%, you pay 20%. And that's after a $50 annual deductible. So let's say you need to have a root canal done you'd pay the first $50 and then you pay 20%. And then type three are major services, crowns, bridges, dentures, also covered at, in fact, uh, pardon me, I'm gonna do a faux pas stake there, covered at 50%, sorry about that. Glad somebody in the audience caught that. Uh, and that's also after a $50 deductible. And by the way, that deductible is per person, not per procedure. So if you have fillings done and you also get a crown, you have one deductible of $50 that you would pay. And then it'll pay again, either 80% of the cost or 50% of the cost, depending on what you have done. Annual maximum for the year, $1,000. And that's $1,000 in benefits paid not necessarily in the charges. So for example, people will say, well, $1,000, that doesn't even cover a crowd. Well, that's true. 
However, keep in mind that on a crown, it covers 50%. So let's say your crown is, and to make the math easy, let's say the cost of the crown is $1,250. You subtract the $50 deductible, that leaves $1,200. 50% of that is $600. So you still have $400 left over that you can then use toward uh, other expenses that are covered under the plan. So again, it's $1,000 in benefits paid per covered mouth, in other words, per family member. So every member of the family that you have covered under the plan uh, has that up to $1,000 per calendar year to use for benefits on the dental. There is also a provision in the dental plan, uh, and I'm just going to touch on it lightly, but it's a nice feature. It's called Max Rewards or Maximum Rewards, and that'll allow you to carry over some of the unused annual maximum. The, the reality is most people don't hit their $1,000 maximum on their dental plan during, uh, during most years. Uh, so let's say you've got uh, money left over on that because you just had your regular checkups. If that's the case, and let's say you have uh, $600 left over that you came up uh, short on that, that you didn't hit the $1,000. You can carry over $500 of that, or the insurance company will actually automatically just do that for you. They'll roll over that unused amount up to $5,000 into the next year. So let's say next year you need to get some major work done. Uh, or maybe you just postpone things because you know you can build it up. So next year, you'd have a $1,500 out-of-pocket maximum in that situation uh, when they roll that over. So you can get more crowns or root canals or uh, other fun procedures should you want to do so, and you'll have more money to spend. So that is something about maximum rewards. Those of you who are on the plan now, uh, some of you will, uh, will have that available to you. And again, the insurance company tracks that, so you don't have to be uh, trying to figure that out. Uh, some other things to talk about with the dental plan coverage, orthodontics. It'll cover 50% of the cost, up to $1,000 lifetime on that. And that's for children up uh, through age 18. And that's a separate maximum. Remember we talked about the $1,000 annual max? That applied to those services on the prior screen. On this page, orthodontics, 50% uh, coverage up to $1,000 lifetime per child. Uh, one thing that I want to point out, and this is, uh, I think, a big deal. For those of you who are looking to come onto the plan, this is definitely something that you'll want to consider, and it's something that I think we'll need to look at for the future as far as what we do in, in negotiating on the plan. But if you're a late entrant, what that means is, is that you are eligible to enroll in the coverage previously, like last year, and you decided not to and thought, well, I'll wait and see if I enroll. You can do that but you are going to have some waiting periods and that's really for the big ticket, bigger ticket items. You will need to be on for 12 months. Exams, cleanings, fluoride treatments will be covered. Anything else in the next 12 months will not be covered. Uh, so that is definitely something that you'll want to uh, consider uh, with the plan as to whether or not you enroll. Uh, for premiums, Coming up, uh, monthly premiums, as we said, will remain the same. The low plan, that is going to be discontinued. So if you're on the low plan, you'll move to this plan. And this is what the new premiums will be for everyone. So you're looking at 3568 if you're just covering yourself. Uh, employee plus one dependent, that dependent could be uh, one child or it could be one spouse. Uh, and then you're looking at 7668 to cover two of you. Employee plus two or more, that could be you, uh, spouse, and uh, one or more children. Could be you and uh, one or more, or, or two or more children. Uh, however, employee plus two or more spouses, then we're into a whole other area, so that's not going to be, that's not a, a viable category. Uh, but you can see what the premiums are there. And again, these are monthly uh, deductions. I will mention that these premiums, uh, when payroll is done, are deducted pre-tax. And what that means is, is that when Miranda does payroll, uh, it's set up so that you have your gross pay 
And then any of these insurance premiums, and this would also apply to your share of the health premium, uh, the dental and the vision premium, those premiums would be deducted from your gross pay first, and then you're taxed on what's left over. And that will save you as a North Dakota resident roughly about 20% of the cost. And as you're looking at this, and, and and I advise you to do so, because I've seen this over many years where people look at dental premiums and they're weighing this out. They're looking at, okay, $35. Do I pay that per month, which is $420 a year, uh, or do I just pay as I go with the dental insurance? And that's a valid question. Well, if you figure you save about 20% on pre-taxing, that's a little over $80 that you save in taxes. Your premium's still the same, but you don't pay as much in taxes. Then here's the other thing when people ask, well, is it worth it to do dental insurance? And, and again, this is entirely up to you on it, but one thing I find about dental insurance is a common characteristic about people who have dental insurance. And that would be is that you're more likely to go to the dentist. I mean, that sounds pretty uh, pretty basic, but that really is the case, that when people have dental insurance in place and you know that essentially you've prepaid for it, uh, you tend to be more likely to go on a regular schedule. So one thing that dental insurance can really do for you is to keep you on track because you're paying on the installment plan. And then should something big happen where you need that root canal or the crown or the bridge or those types of things, uh, wisdom teeth removed, all of those types of things, then you've got some extra assistance with the cost in addition to what you're normally doing anyway. So those are some definite advantages to having dental insurance. Again, if you want to enroll in the dental plan, There'll be enrollers available next week and the week after. You'll be able to meet with them. You can get signed up for it. If you're on the dental plan uh, and want to continue coverage, that will be taken care of for you. Even if you're on the low plan, you'll get a notice about that and just letting you know what the new coverage will be and what your new premium will be. But you won't need to do anything in addition to that. Uh, Before I move on to vision, any questions on the dental insurance? Well, hearing none, I'm going to move into the vision insurance. Hearing none and seeing none. I'm not seeing anything popping up in the chat box. Let's talk about the vision plan. Now, I'll I'll start out comparing it with dental. When I talk about the dental insurance plan, the dental is designed that you can go to any dentist you want to, and you're going to have good coverage. You don't have to worry about going in network to get good coverage. And I'll and I'll still have people that will call afterwards and say, which dentist can I or do I have to go to? Let me be clear again on the dental plan is you don't have to go to specific dentists. If you've got a dentist that you like and they're not in the network, you're still going to have good coverage. You can still use the plan. I say that because it's not the same with the vision plan. The vision plan is really designed Uh, to go to an eye doctor who participates in the network. Uh, And if you want to find out who's in network, the the network name is called VSP. VSP stands for Vision Service Plan, and that is the network. And it's definitely a case there where you far and away get your best coverage at a network provider. And if you don't care to use that provider and you go out of network, I would really recommend to you to think twice or three or four times uh, before you sign up for the vision plan, because really then the benefits are not going to be worth it going out of network. This plan is really designed to go to those locations where the best negotiated discounts are. And we'll take a look at a moment. I did do a a search here and I'll pull that screen up here in a moment as to who's in network with the plan. One thing I do find too with uh, vision plans is that most people aren't as locked into an eye doctor uh, as they are uh, with uh, locked in with uh, 
let's say with a dentist. I did see a note that Miranda put up that say the the insurance is with Emeritus. Emeritus is the company and the, the background that runs the plan. Same with the Vision Reliance Standard is the overall uh, insurance company, and they send out the cards, but they use the network with Emeritus, and that will be the same thing with the Vision. And then from there, they contract with the VSP who provides the network on it. So let's take a look at the coverage on the vision plan in network. Uh, the way it works is that deductibles on it, you get an eye exam, there's a $10 uh, deductible for the exam. And then uh, if you get materials, uh, that would be either eyeglass lenses or frames, you have a $25 deductible for that. And you'll note that it says eyeglass lenses. So that does not apply to contact lenses. Uh, annual exam then after that $10 copay is covered in full. And that's one of the great things about it. You can, with the cost of eye exams nowadays, you can pretty much cover your annual premium uh, just with uh, the eye exam itself on the plan because the eye doctor that participates with VSP, they've agreed to accept a lower fee for the services. And in return, they're getting more people that come to them because uh, they're with VSP. Lenses, if you have single vision lenses, those are covered in full. Line bifocals, line trifocals, covered in full. If you have progressive lenses, that would be the no-line um, lenses, the no-line bifocals. Uh, your coverage on that, they're going to cover a basic progressive lens. If you decide to get a uh, more advanced progressive lens, then you would pay the difference. And by the way, if those of you who are on the vision plan, you don't know how this works. When you go into the eye doctor, uh, they'll do all the calculations for you. They enter your information in, and uh, they're going to be able to tell you right uh, at the time of service as to what your share of the cost will be. So you don't have to try to figure out uh, how that all works. Uh, Allowances for other things, like for frames, for example, it's an either or benefit between frames and contacts. You can use your plan either for frames during a 12 month period or for contact lenses during a 12 month period, but not for both. You do have a $150 allowance uh, for both, but again, you pick which one it is. Uh, so let's say it's frames, that's the more common one. The plan would pick up the first $150 of the cost, and then there's a 20% at least discount after that uh, on the, the remaining cost for the frames. Contact lenses also, $150 allowance for contacts uh, during the year. Contact fit and follow up, the member cost, uh, whatever you're charged, the plan will pay your cost up to $60 uh, for those expenses. Frequency, how often can you use it? You've got a good benefit in this regard in that the exam, the frame, uh, or the contact lenses, uh, those are covered once per 12 months. And that means you can get your eyes checked once in a 12 month period. You can get frames in a 12 month period or contacts in that period. And you can get prescription lenses once in that 12 month period. And we're seeing plans moving to that more frequently. Uh, historically, we've seen a lot of plans that covered a frame once every 24 months. Now you can get it covered every 12 months. Now you may not need to do that, but uh, I've seen a lot of people will use these for uh, maybe they get their regular prescription uh, year one, and then in year two, uh, may get, say, prescription sunglasses. That would be another option. Or maybe you want to get safety lenses if you work in the shop or on the farm or whatever it may be. Uh, but you do have a full set of benefits every 12 months. Now, that's not necessarily every in the calendar year. It's 12 months from the last date of service. Now, there's no waiting period. So if you sign up for the vision, we talked about the dental. You had to be on it for a while to get some things covered. The vision, you hit the ground running. You'll have full coverage as of January 1. And whenever you use it, and, and actually whenever each family member uses it during the year, then 12 months later, your benefits will reset and you're able to use those again at that time. Cost for the plan, very reasonable premiums. These also can come off pre-tax. Of course, we're looking at uh, very low costs. And like I mentioned, uh, for an eye exam, I mean, you, you get your money back just for the eye exam uh, with that. But employee-only coverage, $10.90 a month. 
employee plus spouse, 2286, employee plus the children, 1854, and then full family coverage, uh, ma, pa, and the kids, 2652. And again, that is per month and can be deducted pre-tax. As we said, no vision period or no waiting periods. If you sign up now, uh, you're and you're not on now, your coverage will start on January one, and you'll be good to go. Uh, question comes up as I happen to think about it, so I'll answer it now. Is and this would apply to the dental too. Is if I sign up for it, how long do I have to stay on? Uh, you do agree to stay on the plan for the next year. Unless, of course, you leave employment, then you don't need to, although you could take it along with you on a COBRA. Uh, but if you are signing up and continue to be employed in the next uh, plan year, uh, you're on up until 1-1 of 24. So you have it for the next year. And again, these plans, you really can't go wrong uh, on what you get in benefits relative to the cost on the plan. To search for providers, I'd mentioned uh, you go to vsp.com. Let's see through the magic of Teams if I can uh, pull up that screen. I did have it uh, here where I was uh, uh, had done a provider search. And that may have, uh, wait a minute, uh, it might have disappeared. I did see a question pop up in the meantime is, uh, what's the dental uh, deductible? And uh, for your routine exams, cleanings, x-rays, no deductible for that. Uh, there is a $50 annual deductible, however, for basic and major services. And that's not per service, that is a $50 per person deductible. Hope that answers your question. Any other questions as I uh, attempt to find the eye doctors near me? Here we go. I think I got it. Uh, the local one is Williston Basin Eye Care Associates is the one that's in network uh, in Williston. So you're seeing uh, what I pulled up there. So Williston Basin Eye Care Associates is in network with VSP. Uh, otherwise, you're going to Watford City or to Sydney. So those are uh, the docs and also Newtown. So those are the eye docs in your area that are in network. And again, as I mentioned, uh, you'll definitely, to get your best value, want to go to one of these providers in network uh, to get the best value on the vision plan. Miranda, any other questions? Yes, we do have one. Do wisdom teeth removal uh, fall under major care with the $1,000 max coverage per year per person? Yes, it would. So that would be a major service. So it would be covered at 50%. That's considered uh, uh, extractions. Let me let me go back to that uh, screen just to be sure on that one. Um, hang on just a moment as I navigate back to that. I'm just going to double check. I, I stand corrected. That's actually covered at 80%. That's covered, uh, considered a basic service. So there'd be a $50 deductible and then the plan will pay 80%. That's a good feature within your plan. Uh, most dental plans will cover wisdom teeth and, and extractions at 50%. Uh, major, this one is covering them at 80%. Now, again, if you're not on the plan uh, and you sign up, you would need to be on for 12 months starting January 1. And, and and your dependents too, uh, whoever is getting the wisdom teeth extracted, uh, you would need to be on for 12 months. But if you're currently enrolled, then yes, you would have coverage for the extraction. Any other questions? One more, what does dental cover for spouses visits for regular checkups? Okay, could you run that by me one more time? What does dental cover for spouses visits for regular checkups? It would be the same. So good good question on that one to clarify. The coverage that's listed here is for every person 
or I can say every mouth that's covered under the plan. So everyone in your family that's covered gets these benefits. And every person uh, has a $1,000 annual maximum. So that's not a combined max. Uh, it's for every covered mouth, shall we say, for that. So if your spouse goes in, they're going to have the same coverage as you would have. Same thing for your children. Does that waiting period apply to new employees? Uh, it does not. They would be a timely entrant. So as long as they applied when they're eligible for the plan, then uh, then you would be good in that regard and they would have the coverage. Can you show the cost? Oh, perfect. There you go. Yep. Any further questions? Okay, Miranda, I hand it back to you. Uh, as I said in the beginning, this was recorded or this is being recorded, so we will have it posted on our website soon if you need to go back and reference anything or discuss it with a spouse, family member. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to send me an email. Amanda listed it in the chat. Thank you, Amanda. Um, and thank you all. All right, thank you. Have a good night.